Oh no. <laughs> and teaching for a long time, but uh, not a clinic style. So can you guys hear me through the car? Is the car going? Not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, is the speaker not the right place? Hello? Oh, there you go. Jesus. Okay, right. You guys can all hear me anyway, right?
And if you've ever ridden a horse and it's skated out from underneath of you, that's exactly what they'll do. The inside hind will come too far across, they'll try to balance to the outside, they'll drop the inside shoulder in, and that's fine for them going along in the paddock by themselves, but as soon as you put a weight on top that is also a bit wobbly and moving around, that's when horses can slip and skate out from under you. So it's really important that we teach all these basics right from this point. So Lamb, if you bring her back over, I'm just going to check her body over. Four-year-old, I think, this one. Sue has the paperwork. I don't know, I just deal with the horse in front of me. <laughs> Everyone asks me, like, what size are I? And I'm like, I don't know, I just deal with the horse in front of me. Um, so we're just going to check her over. So typically what we see with horses coming off the racetrack is a soreness at the base of the neck. Shoulders up. And then we come into the sack crawls and she dips away because she's sore. Yeah, it's a soreness at the base there. You can see the last two vertebrae before the tail, the dot. They're a bit raised. It's not really what we like to see. <laughs> and pulse soreness. So we see pulse soreness, lower base of the neck and hips, typically when horses have worn an overcheck that has lifted their head up quite high. The reason that they would have done that with this mare is that if you watch her trot along, she actually moves naturally quite elevated. When she trots along, um, I'll get you to trot out one more time for people to just describe. If you watch the way she trots, she actually trots quite naturally elevated. They, she will have had an overcheck on to lift the, lift the head up, which also drops the back and tilts the hind out, so that they'll run flatter along the ground, not so engaged. Come on! Chip, 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 chip. Make me run! So you'll notice that her trot is actually quite naturally elevated. Trot her back, if she will. She's got a bit of a wamble at the start of her pace. Good girl. So you'll see the trot is actually quite naturally elevated. So she will have had an overcheck on to lift the head up, which is what causes those soreness issues in the area we just checked it out. So bring back to I also like to test out where their body is at before I hop on because yeah. Because all of this stuff means something when I hop on the horse, you know. If, they, if they've got a real weakness on their left side, it's going to cause me an issue in the saddle. So I like to know all this stuff before I hop on, because then I can be empathetic towards her when I hop on and she's struggling with something. quite weak at C2, which is pretty normal. Lamb, can you hold her again? Go to. You 
might need to stand on the other side. less flexibility on that side. Just stand her up square. Asymmetry again. So one hand on the top of the jaw, one hand on the lower. Make sure the teeth are together because they a lot of them have quite chunky tongues. So feel teeth together, and I'm going to ask for a flex to the right and a flex to the left. And she has got a lock on both sides. So what that will mean is that her teeth need doing. A lot of these horses come off the racetrack like we're having to do everyone's teeth. Um, they just don't get done. It's kind of one of the last things. And to be honest, in the race, in, in the racing industry, the horses are mainly going in straight lines. And if somebody said to me, oh, my horse is just a farm hack. We ride in straight lines. We go up hills, we go down hills, we go through rivers. Cool, you probably don't need a serious dental done. But if you're asking the horse to do small 20 meter circles and they have to flex through the jaw, teeth are really, really important, okay? There's different quality of dentists. Um, I recently had one of my clients uh, have her horse's teeth done by a very well known local dentist and her horse had two lots of caps stuck in between the adult teeth and the other dentist who was underqualified said oh look at that your horse has got extra teeth and did nothing about it and this horse was in quite serious pain and showing some quite serious pain issues in his body and Claire Murray came and did his teeth removed removed the excess caps that should have come out at two and a half and the horse is now much, much happier and he's actually got a character as opposed to just being like a limp puppet. Um, so the dentals are really important. We get Claire Murray to do all the dentals. I mean, I know it's been done really properly and really correctly. Um, I prefer to have them done under sedation because it's easier on the horse, but also because power tools can get the kind of finish that you need on the teeth to make it nice and symmetrical for the horse. So what I can feel there is that she might be a little bit unhappy in the bit. We might end up finishing the session bitless, we'll see how she goes, um, and then she'll get her teeth done. But like I say, the first assessment, we don't have their teeth done first because we have quite a strict assessment policy, and if the horses don't make that cut, then they don't progress through the program. So like, I now know she's got a dental issue, um, and she'll get her teeth done. Yeah, and like her incisors don't meet up. That's the other thing that people don't realise is that when horses connect to the bit, the jaw actually flexes forward and back. And if you don't get incisor work done, incisor being the front teeth, they often can't slide. So that makes it really difficult for them and that can make them feel very hard in the mouth. So we like to make sure the teeth are nice and happy. Right, if you hold it, I'll shut her up. <laughs>
my extra professional piece of stick uh, over there on the weekend but I forgot my dressage drop this morning so it's a piece of poplar might go with what you got
right now she's bracing against me. And I'm just gonna hold it until she gives me softness. I'm not asking for full flexion because she's had a problem at the base of the neck. I would not pull her head the whole way around to like touch the saddle. Good girl. And that's all you're looking for. You're looking for the yield and the submission to the contact and the yield that I'm asking for. The same on the left rein. Very right rein. Can you grab my lunge rope out of the front of the float, please? Do a loop on the grass and check that she's not pissy about the sand.
watching to lunge away stay behind the side of the eye. Most of these horses have never been lunged before. If you do the in-hand work and train them to be pushed from behind, then getting to the lunge stage should be really easy. Come on, lazy.
transition was much better. Now what I'm doing with my seat is keeping forward and light. And you'll notice that I ride them quite a rounded back. You cannot ride these horses straight off the bat like you're going to the Olympics. You need to help them out. If I sat up really straight, she'd throw me too far forward and I'd get out of balance with her.
about stopping. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started to feel from her some real tired resistance there. And I don't want to be beating horses for a living, but I had to ramp up my aids quite a lot to the point where I'm like, I don't want to go any further than this. Um, horses don't like to be assholes for no good reason. If there's an issue going on, she needs her teeth done, I can feel that. I'm going to have to do quite a bit of body work, a lot of stretching and suppling in the back end. You can see that at times when I'm riding her, the front end and the back end are doing different things. And that's just a typical problem of them coming off the track. Sometimes the front will do this and the back will do this. Um, and when they're at this stage, it then becomes a building process again. So now that she's been saddle broken and she's good enough to come into the program, I don't feel anything serious with her. She needs some hacking and some fun riding. Probably not a lot of arena work because I don't feel a lot of strength in her. Plus our arena at the facility is not this big, so it would mean that I'd have to do quite tight 20 meter circles, which are gonna be really hard for this horse. She's a big mare, she's long like a bus. Um, and so she'll just be a time, a time horse. So that's kind of where we're at. Does anybody have any questions? Can I ask how she was in the cart? And he was just telling us that he was unhappy. So he's been sitting in the paddock for like months now and he gets quite fit. quite talented at dressage but also he can be quite an explosive force. He struggles from panic attacks and tension and all the fun stuff and he's almost got me off a couple of times because he's super quick but he's also very talented, talented at dressage. So we've been doing in hand work uh, for a little bit. He does shoulder in and leg yield and stuff off the ground and we're just starting to do it ridden. Um, he also has a weak hind which I work on a lot. Um, in the canter transitions, I have to get up off his back before I put any weight onto his back, otherwise he will buck in a transition. Um, the reason for that is that when you do a canter transition, a correct canter transition, the horse naturally has to engage. And so if they've got a weak hind end issue going on, it will cause them discomfort. And it's quite a common problem you hear some people say, oh, the horse pig roots in the, in the canter transition. It's normally a hind end issue because they have to engage to get it. So they know they have to do it to get the next pace but it's uncomfortable so I try and ride bourbon very empathetically and sort of understand that he has got some physical restrictions he was gelded late so he is very culty and I have a stallion at home and so about a year ago he decided that he'd barge through the gate and have a go at my stallion and he got a nice bite on the back hop just above the just above the pointed hop and it bit through the tendon sheath. Cost him about a thousand dollars to rehab him and so you'll notice that when he's warming up he has a slightly shorter stride on that side and I have to be quite conscious of it. So what I do with Bourbon is we warm up doing a little bit of in hand work and I'll show you a bit of shoulder in. A little bit hard on an arena like this because I don't have a wall for him to follow. It's much easier if you can put the hindquarters to a wall and they know that is the guy but he's been doing it for a while now so Hopefully he'll perform. This is his first outing by the way. He's never been off the property. So yeah.
big shoulder in on four tracks. Four tracks means that each person is making a gold line forward. Top shoulder in above the body, every side test will be on three tracks. The inside hind will step into the outside front, making three tracks as they move along. Start in four, we come back to three. So we leg you there, not perfect, but trying.
Come round the corner, ask for the inside flexion, shift my inside leg back. If he doesn't listen, we're going to apply a little whip bait. again. I'm going to try it again.
the rain forward and down and the stride feels better.
bit slobber again. He really doesn't like it. He needs to be clipped the saucy hates big sweaty. I know. I know it's a next week job.
sideways really quick so like he's got sideways in there but he'll go sideways in the wrong way <laughs> no he is oh god now you're questioning me it's got the hrnz website <laughs> he's double bourbon and i just looked this up the other way actually what is it? Here's the so yeah you can see when he gets pants it's his go-to so like we've just had Amir come back into the trust and we'll probably use her for the next clinic um, instead of bourbon probably because she got rehomed and I'd schooled her and she was trotting beautifully and then as it progressed this rider was quite unbalanced and now she won't trot, she only paces. So because the pace is, especially if you get a good pacer, he was a shit pacer but it's still there, it's his go-to if the neck comes up, the back drops and the hind legs trail, it's just yeah, and it's awful. He does come out of it quite quickly because he's got the lateral softness established. He does much better when he's clipped. He's um, by Pay Me Christian. Pay Me Christian? Oh. Yeah, and then there was there, there was Christian Cullen further back on the... That one's by Christian Cullen, eh? And what was the mere side? Um, uh, just checking. So Pay Me Christian is by... Not loads. Like a white horse. They always freak out at white horses. I've only ever seen brown horses at the stables. Yeah, he's by <laughs> Christian Cullen. Quite Christian Cullen. Yeah. What's on the mare side? Um, it's taking a minute. Oh yeah. So the reason I picked this horse, even though he was like quite batshit crazy when I got him, I like the second rider, and he like literally just exploded and went into a brog. And I was like, oh, I like you. <laughs> um, uh, and the reason that I persevered with him is that. If I take a saddle off and you have a look at the build of him, he's uphill build, which is super weird for a stand and bred. So it means that he's naturally inclined to take more engagement in the back end, which I love. And you can see with the trot as it develops along, like there'll be an extension in there. And he's also got enough uh, excitement um, and like energy pent up inside of him that he'll do PR for massage work, no worries. But yeah, you can see it's in there, but I have to take it slowly because of the hind end injury and because of his tendency to get tense very quickly. So that's why I do a lot of in hand work with the source at home, doing the lateral stuff more than I do riding. I just try and introduce the idea of riding. Like when we were at, uh, we went for a road ride the other day, and I was just leg yielding across the road because, like, dressage should be, you should be able to do it anywhere. Yeah, so I try and practice it anywhere we can as well. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and so like that's why he stayed at my property like he's um he's fun to have around and like yeah he's he's quirky but he's got a really genuine way about him um, and I like that he's a real work in progress it keeps him up the yeah, it is gorgeous <laughs> so like um nice yeah with him well, it was the build that sold me on him it's beautiful. and like that's the one thing about riding horses right is we sit our weight over the weakest part of the horse you know bones need muscles to be supporting and muscles need bones to support them it's a, it's a real um, relationship and the thing is that when you ride dressage the whole point of it is that you, your horse naturally has 60% of its weight in the front and 40% in the back when you're trying to balance a horse you're trying to make it 50 50 you're trying to shift some of that forehand type work to the hind end and they take a little bit more in behind 
The problem is with standard breads is that a lot of them are built bum high. So you'll never be able to flip them the opposite way around, you know, with 60% in the back and 40% in the front. It's the same with Yes, exactly. But see, quarter horses, you want the quarter horse to shuffle and be comfortable. So it's a little bit like you do want them on the forehand, but they also don't really extend the shoulders out, do they? Yeah, whereas with standard breads, we want to free the shoulders. Like, it's amazing when I saddle break and you can just feel them do this little wee movement like this in the shoulders. And you're like, mate, give it up. We want you to do this. But it takes, it takes for them. And that's that first wee, when I saddle break them and I'll go down the road and they're shuffling like this. And you're like, no, I want you to stride out and really get that walk. But it takes time. Like even when we took Dinky out the other day, he left just doing this mincy little awful thing. And he was winding himself up. And you're like, dude, you don't have to do it. And then he came back and the shoulders were beautiful and free. But that's how these guys make themselves quite sore on the track as well. And um, like it really is the polar opposite of what you want under saddle to what they do in the car.